Turning to slide 13, we'll take a look at um, new M plus language introduced in uh, version 8.7 for single level, regular single level modeling. And uh, we're listing here five ways to relate variables, some of which have been available before, but nevertheless, for completeness. So we have two variables here. We, we can say that they co-vary using uh, the with uh, language, y1 with y2. But now what's new is that you can use this with for residual variables. So the residuals here for y1 and for y2 are going to be referred to as y1 hat and y2 hat. And we can have a covariance between them without having to introduce a latent variable. Now this all assumes that for this to be relevant, it assumes that these y variables are influenced by something else, such as a random intercept, so that you have true residuals. It should be a residual of a regression of some sort, even if it's a regression of a factor indicator on, an in, on a factor. So that introduces the hat notation that has been available in, uh, in uh, time series analysis using DSIM and RDSIM, actually RDSIM, but now it's available also in regular single level wide modeling. Now then we also have the on statement of course of the regular kind and now we have the on statement of the y hat kind. So uh, y2 hat, that's this variable, regressed on y1 hat with its residual. Again assuming that y1 and y2 are influenced by some variable so that these residuals are relevant as can actually be seen as residuals. And the new, uh, what yet another new on feature is what we need for the moving average part of ARMA. That is, we have y2 regressed on the y1 residual. And then y2 has a residual on top of that. So that's y2 without a hat on y1 with a hat. So this residual language is for single level models and uh, newly introduced in M plus version 8.7. And the uh, y hat notation is spoken as y hat. And as an example, we have the RIAR model where we have other regressions among the residuals from the regression of y or the y's on the random intercept. Now, this residual modeling is available for both continuous and categorical outcomes, but not for nominal outcomes or counts or censored variables. Well, actually, censored variables avail is available with WSMV, but that's a minor point. And for categorical variables, this is a real breakthrough. This residual modeling is done via the base estimator and uh, more, more effic most efficiently by a base estimator. And that has to, ha we had to develop a new algorithm for that. And Tiamer has done some ingenious work on that. And that is um, referred to in, in the overview paper that I referred to er earlier the new paper. So we can now do, therefore, uh, RICLPM for categorical outcomes, binary and ordinal. Now, to summarize this, uh, in the continuous case, we have the five different ways to relate variables. One, two, three, four, five, as we had, like we had on the previous page. So and we have three different estimators, and we just want to uh, list what's available in which estimator. And for all three estimators, we can certainly say y1 with y2 here for continuous variables. And we can say y1 hat with y2 hat for all three estimators. And we can say y2 regressed on y1, uh, of course, and y2 on y, y2 hat on y1 hat for all three. And however, for the uh, moving average situation, the uh, y2 no hat on y1 hat, we only have that available for ML and WSMV, not yet for base, although it can be done using the equivalent near measurement error formulation in the panel data case, although that can be a little harder to uh, work with in terms of convergence for certain cases.
Now if you turn to the categorical case instead on slide 15, uh, there are a little bit more to say about that, and that will be covered more in detail in uh, uh, part 2 of Web Talk 4. Uh, the Y1, Y2 covariance uh, is not available in maximum likelihood, as you may uh, remember from uh, M plus use. Uh, there is no with statement available. Uh, categorical variables uh, calls for, with continuous latent variables for instance, calls for um, numerical integration and to get a residual covariance between two y variables you have to introduce a factor. There's no with statement. Or you can use parameterization equals a risk call and that can be used to allow for conditional non-independence. They say in this factor analysis situation. But for the other estimators we have y1 with y2 <coughs> for both M WSMV and for base and footnote 2 says that here the latent y star variables are used so it's not for the observed categorical variables but for the continuous latent response variables y star which is a natural way of describing association in the categorical case both the binary and the ordinal case for uh, this residual covariance it's also not available in in maximum likelihood like the uh, regular covariance is not, but it is available in WSMV and base. For Y2 regressed on Y1, well for ML that means that we use the observed Y variables, so it's the observed Y1 that predicts the observed Y2. Whereas for WSMV and for base, well for WSMV uh, it is the latent Y star variable that's the predictor here, not the observed. And for base, <coughs> it is the uh, you have the choice actually. This y1 can be observed or latent, depending on how you specify predictor as observed or as latent. But for base, um, you don't have for ML and for base, you do not have the moving average situation available to you. Uh, it could be developed for for uh, base, but it isn't there. But it is available for WSMV. Now, um, let's take a look at how this uh, shows up, how this new language shows up in uh, two different situations. One uh, is the uh, growth model with autocorrelated residuals uh, that we talked about in the growth modeling context. We have a user's guide example 6.17. Uh, which looks like this. You have four variables and you have a gro linear growth model I and S with a linear development over time <coughs> and you have residual variances and here we set them equal across time and then we have these pairwise with statements for uh, lag 1 and um, for lag 2 and for lag 3 here. The only these are the only cases with four variables. And then you have to add a model constraint. This is again in, in old M plus, so to speak, where you introduce um, three parameters here as uh, the three parameters here as functions only two parameters, residual variance, which is this equal residual variance and correlation to power one, two, and three. So this model specifies <coughs> Equality of order regressions. The order regression coefficients are equal across time, and the residual variances are equal across time. So it's a little complicated to specify, particularly if you have, say, 10, 10 time points, <coughs> then you will have a lot of model constraints here. So in the new uh, version 8.7 hats language, here's how you specify it in the right column here. Same growth model, but then you just say, you refer to the residuals directly as variables. Y2 hat through Y4 hat is pairwise regressed on Y1 through Y3. So 2 on 1, 3 on <coughs> 2, and 4 on 3. So directly relating the uh, residual to each other. And in this case, we have the more, perhaps more flexible model of free order regressions. These are different coefficients. They're not the same across time, these auto regressions here. And the residual variances are free as well. 
if you want to uh, mimic what we have on the left here with equality of autoregressions and residual variances, <coughs> you have to uh, uh, add special specifications on model constraints using model constraints. So I'm not going to go through that. But this is a very simple specification which will be useful. <coughs> now, uh, we talked about several different panel data models here, and uh, it's time to summarize them and show on one slide all of the different relevant models and uh, look at how we um, refer to them. So we have dynamic models where y sub t is regressed on y sub t minus 1, previous time point. <coughs> and we have non-dynamic models where we don't regress y onto itself. So among the dynamic models, we talked about autoregressive models. It's a classic model, which is dynamic by definition, y on y. Typical time series feature. And we have the ARMA model, which are autoregressive, moving average model. Classic model, which is dynamic by definition as well. And then we have the uh, additions of the uh, random intercept here, but a dynamic version of it. So the AR, autoregression, auto is of the classic dynamic kind, but with a random intercept added. And then same for ARMA, classic ARMA, dynamic, but with RI added. <coughs> And then we have the non-dynamic models. And again, the dynamic models are more like the classic CLPM, and the non-dynamic models are more like the RI CLPM. So we have the RI AR model specified for the residual within level the variable centered part, and the RI ARMA, which is ARMA specified for the residual within level the variable modeling part. So these models are formulated for the univariate case. So you see how many models you can study uh, in the univariate case, and then you pick the model for each process <coughs> that you see as best fitting. That makes sense. And you put the two parts together, the two univariate parts together into a bivariate model that has the cross lags in it. So. Here's a second example then of how the new language plays out. <coughs> M plus input for RIAR modeling continues univariate ML using the old approach versus the new approach in version 8.7. So old approach on the left and new on the right. <coughs> so in the old approach, we specify all of these factors, all of these um, circles that we saw in the, in the uh, model figures. And we uh, say that those uh, residuals, uh, residual variance are fixed at zero. So all of these factor loadings are fixed at one by default. And we define a random intercept factor i here. And then we do the uh, AR regressions among the uh, factors. So this is the univariate part of the RICOPM. We add model equals no covariances to not have to fix at zero all, all unwanted covariances, for instance, between i and the different f's. On the right, you have the simplified language. No uh, specification except for these two lines, really. And that's all you need to do for the uh, univariate case. You have a um, random intercept and then AR1 regressions among the residuals. And then you can imagine then that going from the, this univariate case to the bivariate case will seem very simple to specify instead of having to add all of these factors by hand. 